Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Founders Grid sponsored by Caper.io. Today we have Brad. Brad is the CEO of Wildfire. Brad, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So a brief background about yourself with a little spice about your love and hate relationship with Wildfire for 20 years now. Can you share? Yeah, so brief background. Um, I am a North Carolina native born and raised in Winston-Salem and uh, spent after school when I got my degree in journalism concentrated in advertising. I spent the first five years of my career actually in the fundraising world and uh, translated those skills into marketing because it's really the same thing. You're, you're um, helping someone to figure out why they want to buy a product or service versus give money to an organization. And I went to work for a, a company here called Long Hames Car, which ultimately became part of the Mullen organization. And um, after about eight years there and the, the merger and some differences in where things wanted to go, I uh, started Wildfire for, with a partner for three basic reasons. The, the head side of it was do what we love in the community where we are and provide for our family. And over the last almost 19 years, um, with some really good decisions, some pretty bad decisions, learning from both of those, a lot of hard work and some luck sprinkled in, We've built a great business that uh, employs almost 35 people in two locations, one here in Winston-Salem, one in Richmond, Virginia. And um, you know, over that course of time, we have really tried to learn how to listen to our clients and live up to the promise that we make to them, which is grow their business while we lower their blood pressure. So we're primarily project-based, which has um, become the new norm for some agencies. We've been doing that since the very beginning. Um, it's always a challenge. It's always a challenge, but there's something new and different to tackle every day that we come into uh, the office and, and see what we need to get done. And I'm now the host. Sorry, we'll have to go with take so I'm going to... <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Founders Grid, sponsored by Gaper.io. Today, we have Brad Bennett. Brad is the CEO of Wildfire. Brad, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. So can you tell us a brief background about yourself, uh, what you've been doing for the past 20 years, your love and hate relationship with wildfire and what you've been up to prior to that? Absolutely. So yes, I've been doing this uh, off and on. Let's see, I've been doing this business now for close to 25 years. I actually started my career in the fundraising world um, for the first five years out of school and transitioned those skills over to the advertising world, which is where I, what I have my degree in. And they're basically the same thing, whether you're marketing a product or service or marketing an institution or a, a cause to give money, you're trying to convince someone to buy into what you're selling them. And so um, after a career with Long Hames Car here in Winston-Salem, which became part of the Mullen organization, I stepped back and started my own business with a business partner called Wildfire in May of 2002, so about 19 years ago. And we did it for three basic reasons. We wanted to do what we love in the community where we are and provide for our family. And over the last 19 years with some really good decisions, some not so great decisions, learning from both of those, um, a lot of hard work and some luck sprinkled in. We've been able to build an integrated marketing business that employs 35 people in both Winston-Salem and Richmond and delivers every day on our promise to our clients to grow their business while we lower their blood pressure. And what we've learned is that every day brings us a new challenge and that every client, when they bring us something to get done, is a challenge for them. And it has an impact on their business. We want to help them not have sleepless nights over what's going on. And so we work hard to listen to what they need and provide them the answers in the form of uh, commerce-based creative solutions. Got it. So, you know, before we start discussing the recent times, the last 15 months of when the pandemic hit and how it affected wildfire, prior to that, you know, can you discuss the, maybe you want to highlight or just I know 20 is a lot of time to discuss within one minute, you know, the highs and the lows, or maybe top three pieces of advice you would want to give youngsters who are just starting out that kept you going for all these 20 years. Sure. 
So, you know, we, we saw rapid growth um, early on. We went, we started 2000, we started 2002. We started 2004 with uh, six people. We started 2006 with 28 people. So we went through some rapid growth. And what we learned from that, and I would, I would suggest that, that anyone's looking into this is to make sure you put that growth in place with, with systems that help you to operate. And that's a lot easier today than it was um, 15 years ago. There's many things that we can tap into. Um, pay attention to your cash flow. We found, us, we found ourselves in a position uh, around the Great Recession where we had a million dollars in receivables and we had no cash. And I had to go tap my personal line of credit to make payroll. Well, you gotta pay attention to that cash flow. It's great to have receivables, but if you don't have cash to pay people, it's gonna be really hard. And I think, and then lastly, um, before we get into discussions about the pandemic is, as you're growing and you're staffing, make sure you hit a tipping point of revenue that um, suggests that you need to hire a person. If you can handle it with some freelance talent or the gig economy that's out there, until you see enough revenue to justify a full-time hire, then I think that's a great way to grow business as well. Um, I mentioned, we, well, maybe I didn't, we, we're 85% project-based and we've been that way for the entire time. So we have great relationships with clients, but organic growth is our number one source of growth with our clients. And that's true, I think, for anybody who's in this industry. Got it, makes sense, makes sense. So last 15 months, you know, how it has affected wildfire because COVID has impacted different industries in a different way. For some, it has acted as a catalyst. For the others, it has just kind of the effect and not. So how has the right been for wildfire? So let me talk about that from the rational and the emotional. So on the rational side, our business did take a hit. Um, we came into the pandemic. We had a wave of work that, that came to us late January, early February that carried us into May of last year. Um, and then we saw a significant slowdown. Um, if, our, if our month was supposed to be 100% to make our year, our, our June was 20%. Our July was 40%. Thankfully, it was offset by some 160 and 150 percent months, but we still ended the year 25 percent down year over year in revenues. The good news was we were able to retain our, our people, and we did that through a combination of some, some significant austerity measures on the budget. Uh, we did have to implement some salary reductions. We were recipients of a PPP loan, and by just making sure that we were delivering consistently with our clients. So that's what the picture of that period of time through 2020. 2021 has started off fantastic. People have, have come back. Our business is, is um, better than it has been in a while, and we're on track to surpass where we were in 2019, which was a growth year for us. Emotionally, it's been uh, the other side of the coin has been a coming together. I mean, we went virtual on March 16th of last year. While our office is open, we are still virtual for the most part because people want uh, still don't have that full confidence of being back together. Um, but our productivity never dropped. Our creativity continued to increase and we delivered for our clients. Transparency with our team was just a, a hallmark to keeping them confident and comfortable that we were able to continue as a company. And we were able to do a lot of small things along the way. You know, very early on, we, we sent them gift cards uh, to go use at local restaurants so that they could prop them up. Um, we were able to provide some office supplies for them stocking their homes for things of that nature. And we were able to continue some of the in-person events that help us keep our culture alive. So we've come through this, um, I think a stronger organization, both financially and um, as a culture. And as we continue to think about how we're going to come back together in person, we hope to see those things continue to thrive. All right. So, you know, uh, creativity over Zoom. Uh, this is what I've been discussing with multiple individuals. Okay, coding over Zoom is possible. You know, you're working in sprint mode. Software engineers, uh, they're used to working remotely. But, you know, coming up with creativity, marketing strategies over Zoom, prior to that, you know, it used to be... a it, involved a lot of brainstorming, whiteboards, things like those. So I'm sure you would have faced those challenges if you were a fully immersed in office going team. So how would you kind of like adapt to the whole virtual environment? What kind of like things, tricks you did and 
Can, can you share a bit light on that? Sure. You know, I, I am so proud of my team for having done that. My role in the company is business development and administration. So I'm not involved in a lot of the day-to-day, -day, but I, I am privy to the conversations about what goes on day-to-day -day and how they rallied and found ways to do that, whether it was um, using Google Meet or Zoom or life size is, is a technology we have or Teams um, with clients and individuals. They found great ways to brainstorm and share ideas. Um, we had adopted the Google Suite, um, G Suite, right before the pandemic hit. That collaborative tool made it a lot easier for us to share ideas as well. And I think finally, um, we continued to encourage people to explore creativity beyond just the work they were doing for clients. So we would hold, we have held events that encourage people to look at uh, the newest in what was out there in, in television advertising or online advertising. Um, we had showcases where we were sharing what we're seeing from award shows and things of that nature that were still to a degree happening. So that, that continued push of curiosity uh, is something that's always, that has always been a part of our culture, but we saw continue even in the virtual world. So again, what I'll say is I'm very proud of our team that they found the ways to leverage technology to not lose that ability to uh, collaborate and brainstorm together. So then the next question is, uh, last couple of questions, uh, Zoom fatigue, mental health, those kind of things started, uh, came under discussion if I remember around August, September last year, when everyone was kind of like feeling burnt out, especially, uh, you know, if you're, everyone is at home with small kids or, you know, in close kind of environment. So multiple teams started or multiple companies started coming up with a new culture where they could overcome those kind of things. So did you face those challenges or uh, can you share any kind of steps you took? We did. We did individually and we did as a company. I, I know, and I can speak personally on this, that a day of back-to-back -back Zoom calls is far more exhausting than a day of back-to-back -back meetings because you at least have those little breaks in between those back-to-back -back meetings where you might get up and move around. <laughs> we didn't tend to do that um, initially on, on the Zoom calls. I think as a company, we felt the same way, which was why schedule a Zoom call for an hour when maybe you could cover it in 15 minutes? And so we found much more productive ways to do that. The final thing that we did as company-wide was we made sure people were focusing on self-care. Uh, we, we had a, we have a conscious effort um, and, and up through the end of 2020, there was a daily email that went out uh, from authored by me with input from others. And in that email gave them a thought of the day. And that thought of the day many times focused on, are you taking care of yourself? Are you taking breaks? Are you stepping away and stepping outside and getting some fresh air? Are you, are you getting vitamin D, whether it's through an artificial source or actually going out and, and sitting in the sun for a little bit? Are you, um, are you eating properly? Just many of those things that are about health and wellness that, that help you stay mentally focused uh, for work. So we, um, and we also continue to, to survey our individuals to make sure that we were providing them with the input and the support that they needed. Uh, last question, what personal productivity hacks you adopted in your own life on a daily basis that help you to be more productive as well as taking care of your mental health? You know, what personal activities you start? Sure. Um, you know, I'm right on the cusp um, age-wise of the digital age. And so I've deployed more digital tools to make myself productive. Uh, we, as an organization, deployed Asana. I've dived headfirst into utilizing that. Um, I have I created my, my own system of follow-up in, in that that's helped me be more productive. Um, I've, I've realized that uh, utilizing a system of flagging emails that I know what certain colors mean is a, is, a, is a system that I've deployed that I had not used before and it's helped on that front. And then finally is, and this, this is um, part productivity and part mental health, but is at least scheduling five minutes between things that I can get up and just move around. 
Um, so I'm not sitting all day and I'm getting the right number of uh, steps in a day so that I'm, I'm not uh, just gonna stiffen up and become a board. <laughs> That's makes sense. Brad, thank you so much for being on the show. I'm pretty sure we're gonna have talked for another half an hour, but you know, we tried to keep them short and sweet. Thank sure. you so much for being on the show. Take care of yourself and stay safe. Thanks for having me. You have a great day. And we've stopped.